Hi everybody, Tim Moore here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the tools and techniques that I use to stay safe on the ice. So some of the essential tools that I carry, especially in the early and late ice periods, are a pair of floating safety picks, a spud bar, carry a throw rope, this clam lifeline, uh, I even wear, uh, a lot of people don't consider these safety equipment, but they are a good pair of cleats. And uh, my ladle or something to measure the thickness of the ice. I also wear a float suit. This happens to be the ascent. I also have a rise suit. And for you ladies, we have the women's glacier suit as well. So we all know, all of us ice anglers know that there is no such thing as safe ice, truly safe ice. Uh, so one of the cardinal rules of ice fishing is know before you go. Always check for yourself, check your way out, and bring proper safety equipment. And one of the most important tools that I have for that early and late ice period is my spud bar. Some people see this as a means of chipping a hole. I see it as a means of checking the thickness of the ice. So I can go out and I can walk out off of shore a little bit. I can use the spud bar to chip through, find out if it's safe enough for me to, to walk and then continue my way out. I can also kind of use it as a walking stick and listen for the sound to change. If the sound changes, the thickness of the ice has changed. And a uh, very essential tool. The general rule of thumb with a spud bar for most people is two blows in one spot. If it goes through, it's not safe to turn around and go back. So another thing that I, that I carry with me, especially in that early and late ice period, are my safety picks. These are the clam floating ice picks, and it's really important that you're ice picks float because if for some reason they happen to fall off when after you fall through the water they are going to sink if they don't float and they're useless and another advantage to them floating is if there's debris ice and snow uh, these these will float up in front of your face where you can see them and get a hold of them and these can be used if you do go through to help pull yourself back up on the ice and the general technique is to kick your feet and drive these into the ice and use them to pull yourself back up onto the surface of the ice which brings me to my, my next piece of equipment is my suit. This is the Ascent suit, the Ice Armor Ascent suit, which has motion float buoyant technology sewn into it, into the, the entire uh, coat, and is, it's also in the bibs. So that's gonna pop me back up near the surface of the water and make it much easier with the help of my picks to pull myself uh, out of the water. Uh, this suit, one other advantage of this suit is it has quick drain technology, so the water will drain out of it really fast as I'm pulling myself out, which is also a really important feature. Next thing I carry, this is always in my snowmobile or in my tub early ice when I walk out, is the Clam Lifeline. This is a 50-foot uh, uh, throw rope, so there's 50 feet of line in here so that if I fall through, someone can get it, or if somebody else falls through, I can grab this, hold on to one end, throw the bag, and I can throw that line to whoever needs assistance or somebody can throw it to me and get, and get pulled out. Now it's pretty common early ice and late ice to not have any snow, to have a very slick surface, which is why I consider cleats to be a safety item. It's not just a convenience so I don't fall. It can also be used if I need to pull somebody out, I can get myself some traction and, and pull them out or if somebody's pulling me out, uh, they can at least have something to dig into on that early and late ice periods when it's glare ice. The last piece of safety equipment I carry with me is, is something to measure the thickness of the ice. Sometimes I'll either use my spud bar, I'll also bring my auger out and drill a hole and I can pop this down through and pull it up underneath and measure the thickness of the ice. Some people, something to measure the thickness. Some people will put a tape measure on their spud bar and, and use that. You can bump it up underneath the edge of the ice, but something so you know exactly how much ice you're on. Generally, the recommendations are four inches is safe to support a person on foot. Five inches, depending on how good your ice is, is enough to support an ATV or a snowmobile. Uh, I, I'm a little more conservative. I run six to eight inches. I won't run, drive my snowmobile on less than six inches. Uh, Twelve inches for a car or a small pickup truck and then 15 plus for a full-size pickup truck if you, if you do drive on the ice. Those are general, general recommendations. But, you want to remember there's there's no such thing as safe ice. There are a lot of factors such, you know, besides temperature, such as wind, rain, springs, current, those will all dictate how uh, and when ice forms. Here on Lake Winnipesaukee, we have a lot of enclosed bays that will freeze first. 
and the wind will keep the larger areas of those bays open longer. So one place will be frozen and could stay frozen long enough to gain four to six inches of ice if it's really cold, but there's been a lot of wind, so the larger area of a bay doesn't freeze. And then when it finally does freeze, you can go from 10 inches to four inches or four inches to an inch and a half within just uh, uh, 10 yards, you know, just a very short distance, wherever that wind line was. So it's really important to have these tools with you so you can check your thicknesses. Don't ever look out there and see people on the ice or see people driving snowmobiles on the ice and just assume that it's safe because they did it. Speed and lots of other things have, have uh, are factors that, that determine whether or not a snowmobile can stay up on the ice. And um, you don't want to take any chances. It's, it's just not worth it. So be careful out there early ice and late ice, and remember that there's no such thing as safe ice, and we'll see you on the ice.